Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, August 19th, 2011. Before I start off today, I'm going to show you one of my RC planes that crashed yesterday. It was my Easy Fly 40. The back end looks good, but look at this. The whole front end's shrapnel now. It's all in pieces. It was approximately over 100 feet and it fell out of the sky and just went straight down. One of the blades of the propeller broke off and there's a part of the carb right here that's broken. You can see it broke right off where the threads are. All the wings suffered is a big hole right here. That's repairable. I'm going to fix the wing but the plane I'm not going to bother fixing that. It's way too much work. Everything is just destroyed. There's even a hole in the gas tank from the impact. And the battery pack for the receiver inside the plane has a hole in it. That's from the impact as well. That was a brand new battery actually that I had just bought. Anyways, it's a shame, but I guess that's part of the hobby. You just gotta expect these things. Now what I think happened is that there was some kind of radio interference. And as soon as I went over some trees, I just lost complete radio control. No matter what I did with the joysticks on the radio, it just didn't matter. It didn't respond to any movements on the radio. So if anybody knows where I can buy an Easy Fly 40, or if you guys have an old kit kicking around that you guys are never going to build, just let me know. I'd like to keep this plane here for parts. I really liked it because it was easy to fly. It flew really good compared to my other plane over here that's slightly heavier. And it's perfect to learn on. So if you guys know where I can get one, just let me know. The first question I'm going to start off with today is one that a lot of YouTubers ask me. And that is, why is there a lot of fuel leaking out of the carburetor of my small outboard motor? Well, sometimes you can have fuel coming out of the carb if you prime it too much with that bulb right there. But if your carburetor always leaks fuel even though you're not using it, what you need to replace is the needle and seat. Now this is what usually comes with the needle and seat kit for Evinrude and Johnson Motors. And for Mercury's, it's pretty well going to be the same thing as well. Now this kit I'm showing here today is for the smaller Evinrude and Johnson outboards. And this is the part number here, 0396522. Now I've had to replace a lot of these kits over the years and that usually does the trick if your carburetor leaks even though you're not using it. Another good tip for these engines is when you're done using them, at the end of the day, unplug the fuel line and run it dry until the carburetor has burned all the fuel that's left in it. In that way, there's no fuel left in there to go bad and also you're not gonna get fuel leaks if you flip the motor over on its side. In my next question, a YouTuber is asking me, does it matter which way the bar on the chainsaw is installed? For example, can you install it this way here with the label upside down? Is it going to matter? Well, the answer to that is no, it's not going to matter and I'll show you why. The reason why it's not going to matter is because there's oiler holes on both sides of the bar as you can see here. Now the oil goes through this hole here, goes up to the chain up here and works its way all around the bar. Now the oiler hole on the chainsaw or the channel will line up with this hole here on the bar so even if you flip it over like this it ends up matching anyways so it's not necessary to have the logo upright like this as you can see it's upside down and it's still going to get oil from the chainsaw and sometimes it's a good idea to flip them over because the bar gets worn out at the bottom here where it goes into the wood and gets really large here and the chain can get loose so if you flip it over then the chain is a bit tighter on this side because there's not as much wear and tear on the top of the bar when you're using your saw. You can also use a tool like this or a really flat screwdriver and clean the bar of all the shavings. This will make it a lot easier for the chain to get oil because the shavings are not going to be there to soak it all up. Always make sure that the oiler hole on the bar is unplugged. You can use compressed air to do this. Always make sure to wear safety glasses though when you do that. A lot of people email me to tell me that their chainsaw isn't getting oil to the chain and most of the time you'll find that the oiler hole is plugged. So that would be the first thing I would check because it's much cheaper than replacing the bar, the oiler pump and other parts like that. And most of the time that's all the problem is. The oiler hole is plugged with sawdust and prevents the oil from going to the chain. Another question I get sometimes is people ask me, what do you use to soak up oil that you spilled on your garage floor? Well, if you're into woodworking or you know people that are, you can always collect the sawdust that they have and if ever you spill oil on your garage floor, just throw some sawdust on there. It's going to suck up the oil really good, then you just get rid of it. Another product I use here is Safety Sorb. And this product here will soak up oil, grease, water, coolant, and it says so much more. 
And here's some other uses for it. People use it as cat litter even for soil conditioner, traction if you're stuck in the winter time, and for controlling odor. And this is 100% clay product. So it's not bad for the environment and as you know clay really sucks up stuff and odors and it's fairly cheap as well. I only paid $12 for this bag at an automotive store. And it's a 50 pound bag or 22.68 kilograms. After I swept up the sawdust or the clay product I showed you in the bag, I used this heavy duty degreaser. I just spray it on the floor and then wipe it up with a rag. And you can buy this product at Home Depot for under $20. Just follow the instructions on the label, put it in a spray bottle, and it's convenient to use. So that'll be it for this week's Q&A. So keep the questions coming. If I can't get to them, it's not that they're not important, it's just I've been just way too busy. So thanks again for watching, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.